Okay, I'd like to tell you about the RL circuit. Um, when you close a circuit like this, if there's an inductor in here, um, it takes a little bit of time for the, the current to reach its final value. And the reason for that is because when as soon as you close a switch, let's say there was a switch here and you closed it, the first thing that happens is when you start to try and change the flux in here, this pushes back. It, it acts just like a battery pushing the other way. And so it matches, it will it will try and stop the current from changing. And it's going to lose out and the current will end up being equal to, uh, the current will equal some steady state current. And this will end up behaving just like a wire. Okay, so um, let me show you how you calculate what the, the I should be. But if you notice that's a growth graph, and so the I is apparently, if I were going to guess, the I is going to be equal to some I final value minus I final E to the negative some constant times T. So I should get some form like this for the, for the current. And so the way I'm going to um, derive this equation, I should, when I get done, I'll have what the value for K is. Um, the way I'm going to derive that equation is I'm going to use Kirchhoff's loop rule, which says that when you go around a loop, you got to lose all your voltage. So if I start here, if I go up, I got, I'm going to gain some voltage, then I'm going to drop some voltage, and I'll drop some more voltage. And then that was going to be equal to zero total volts when I, when I add all those up. Kirchhoff's loop rule. And so let me go ahead and do that. Let's call this E and this R and that L. And um, so at any given time, Kirchhoff's loop rule is obeyed. And so I'm going to say that the EMF of the battery, we'll just call that E, minus IR, that's the um, voltage across the resistor, um, minus LDI DT, that's the voltage across the um, inductor, that's going to equal zero. Okay, so um, to, if I want to solve for I and see get a function for how I varies with time, I'm going to separate my terms and get my terms with um, I in them on one side and DT on the other. So maybe I'll bring this term on the other side. So E minus IR, this is going to be some math now. E mi minus IR is equal to L di DT. Okay, now I'm going to switch, I'm going to bring this DT over here, and I'm going to bring this whole thing underneath here. And maybe I'll bring the L on the other side. So I'm going to have um, DT over L, so I brought this and this on the other side, is equal to DI over E minus IR. See, now I have my DI with my I, trying to, to get my terms together. And now I'm going to integrate. That's how I get rid of the di and the dt. I'm going to integrate. And I'm going to say um, this is going to start out at, um, let's say, 0. And go to some i. And this will be um, t equals 0 to some time t. Okay, so um, if I take the derivative of, or the, the antiderivative or the integral of this side, rather, it's going to be, um, I think that's just going to be T over L when I take the derivative. This side, um, I'm going to have to use some integration by substitution. So I'm going to say, um, well, let me just bring this down here for right now. And now to do integration by substitution, I'm going to say um, let u, the variable u, equal e minus ir. Then um, the, so I can put in a u there, but I want to change this to du. If I'm going to make this u, I'd like this to be du. And so um, I'd like to get the di out of there. So the du, the derivative of u with respect to i, is going to be equal to, uh, when you take the derivative of u with respect to i, don't you get negative r? And so the di, if I bring the di over here and the r over there, apparently di 
is equal to du all over negative r. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so um, for di, I'm going to substitute this in now. So apparently I'm going to say t over l is equal to, I'm going to leave off the, the parameters right now. And I'm just going to say that um, this the di is du. Let me pull out, well, I'll bring the r out in front, I suppose. So it's going to be um, negative 1 over r du all over um, u. Okay, I'm ready to go here. Now I can take that derivative. That derivative, or excuse me, that integral is going to be, um, I got a t. Can I bring the, I'm going to take this r out, it's a constant, and bring it on the other side. So it's going to be negative r over l times t. See how I brought that on the other side. And then I'm going to um, take the integral of this. And so the integral of that side is going to be the natural log of u. Now, rather than write the natural log of u, remember u was e minus ir. So it's going to be the natural log of e minus ir. And we are going to have our boundary conditions now. That's going to be, uh, or my parameters are going to be 0 and i. Okay, so now I'm going to put in, um, let me put in i first. So that's going to be, I'm going to get negative r over l times t is equal to the natural log of, and I'll put in the i first. So it's going to be e minus i r. And now I'll put in 0 for i. So it would be minus the natural log. When I put in 0, it's just of e. Okay, this can be simplified to being the natural log of e minus ir all over e. Okay, but I would like to get i all alone on one side. I'd like to solve for i. And so to do that, um, maybe what I'll do is um, I'll raise e to this and I'll raise e to this. Since, since these two are equal, e raised to this that should equal e raised to this. Oh boy, this is a lot to write. Okay, but these are inverses of one another, and so what I get is e to the negative r over lt, that's equal to, this is just gonna go right to e minus ir all over e. Let me bring this E on the other side. Running out of space here. So I'll bring this on the other side. So I'm left with um, e, my, um, e times the EMF rather times E to the negative R over LT. That's equal to E minus IR. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Now I'm going to switch. I'm going to go. I'm going to... Um, bring this on the other side and this over here. So I'm going to get IR is equal to E minus E. <laughs> I, should, I should discriminate between the two. I get that, okay? Okay, now um, let me then divide both sides by R. And so this, this is um, the final, this will be the final current. The final current will just be E over R. And um, so that's the final current minus the final current, E over R, times E to the negative R over L times T. So the constant is R over L. And when I graph that, it's gonna it's gonna be a growth graph. It's gonna it's gonna approach an asymptote, and the asymptote is e over r. Okay. The way I remember this constant, it's just a goofy thing. Is I think of rolling logs tumble, rolling logs tumble. That's just kind of a weird thing. All right. I'm gonna drive another equation for you in the next video. Okay. Bye.